Welcome to our exploration of the ancient Mesoamerican pantheon. Today, we're diving into the intriguing tale of Quetzalcoatl, one of the most influential deities of these ancient civilizations. This feathered serpent deity wasn't just the god of the wind, air, and learning, he also had a peculiar fear of public speaking. Would you believe that this mighty celestial being once transformed himself into a snake to avoid a dreaded speech at a god conference? That's some serious social anxiety. So if you ever feel nervous about giving a presentation, just remember, even gods get fright. Let's venture into the fascinating life of Quetzalcoatl, revered by the Aztecs, Mayans, and Toltecs. But before we begin, if you like this kind of content, please like the video, comment below, and subscribe to my channel. Now let's dive in. Now Quetzalcoatl wasn't just known for his flashy feathers and fear of speeches, he also had some pretty wild adventures. Let's start with the creation of mankind. Quetzalcoatl, with his knack for life-giving, thought it would be a grand idea to give humans a second shot at existence. Kind of like hitting the reset button on a video game, right? He journeyed to the underworld which, spoiler alert, is not the most delightful holiday destination. He was after the bones of the ancient dead, which he intended to use to kickstart humanity 2.0. Now imagine trying to retrieve bones in a place where the landlord is a lord of death. You'd think Quetzalcoatl would get a free pass being a god and all, but nope. After a lot of hustle, dodging deathly traps and probably wishing he'd packed a better underworld survival kit, he managed to secure the bones. With a sprinkle of his own blood, voila, the humans were back. Then there's the drama with his brother Tezcutli Pauka, talk about sibling rivalry. It's one thing to squabble over who gets the last slice of pizza but these two took it to a whole new level, they were constantly at loggerheads, and their squabbles often resulted in some pretty seismic shifts in the world. Like the time when Tezcutli Pauka tricked Quetzalcoatl into getting, let's say a bit too merry on pulque which led to some unsavory behavior and a whole lot of embarrassment. You think your holiday party stories are wild? Try topping that. And then, like any good drama, there was the heart-wrenching departure. Overcome with shame from the Pulque incident, Quetzalcoatl decided to leave the Aztec world. But he didn't just grab his stuff and head out, oh no. He built a raft of serpents and sailed off into the eastern sky promising to return one day. Who knew that godly duties involve so much drama, right? It's like a celestial soap opera. Alright folks, let's do a quick recap on our feathered friend here. Our guy Quetzalcoatl is not your average deity. He's got style, he's got class, and he's got a whole lot of feathered sass. He's the god of wind and learning, which is a pretty unique combination if you ask me. Imagine being the god of both hurricanes and homework. Talk about a diverse portfolio. Now let's not forget his unique fashion sense. He's a feathered serpent, which makes him a part bird, part snake, and all kinds of fabulous. He's the original trendsetter, making feathers and scales the go-to look for all aspiring gods. And oh, the adventures he's had. Quetzalcoatl has been around the block and then some. He's traveled to the underworld and back, created humanity, and even battled his own brother. And you thought your family get-togethers were dramatic. But it's not all fun and games. Quetzalcoatl has had his fair share of challenges. Let's just say public speaking isn't his strongest suit. But hey, even gods have their weaknesses, right? His impact on Mesoamerican cultures is undeniable. He's been worshipped, revered, and even feared. From the Aztecs to the Maya, Quetzalcoatl has left a lasting impression that still resonates today. So, there you have it Quetzalcoatl, a feathered god, part-time snake, and full-time drama king. Who says mythology is boring, eh?